time traveler from the future, and I was trying to gain insight into the evolution of nuclear safety. Ah. Uh, well, how may I help you? Well, you were the first person to run a nuclear reaction test safely and successfully. Yes, this is true. And I was wondering, what kind of safety features did you implement into your design? Well, in our first reaction, what we had to do was make sure that the control, we had three sets of control rods and the last two sets of control rods were actually used as our safety precaution. Um, in actuality, our last control rod was actually connected to a rope, and it was the responsibility of the safety control rod axe man to actually cut the rope in case the reaction got out of hand. So that's what scrap means. So wait, hold on, there's a person whose sole duty was to stand above a live nuclear reaction and cut a rope in case of an emergency? Isn't that dangerous? Yes, and yes. And we also had people armed with cadmium salt to pour over these control rods in case the reaction did get out of hand. Why cadmium salt? Well, cadmium salt is an excellent neutron absorber and has a very high absorption cross-section and this will help stabilize the reaction. Hmm. So with all these safety features implemented, how did, you, how did the first test go? Well, the first test went marvelously and interest into building the first new reactor, reactor was soon underway. Um, of course, these reactors would be more sophisticated than <laughs> my experiment that I did with mechanized control rods and adequate containment structures mm -hmm. to prevent radiation leakage. Oh, well, thank you very much, Professor Fermi. I can see why they call you the father of nuclear energy. Oh, really? They call me the father of nuclear energy? Wow, I'm flattered. Well, good day to you, sir. Good day. Hopefully I answered all the questions. Oh, yeah, you did. Thank you. Man. Uh, I think that's an engineer right there. We'll go ask him. Yeah, go do that. Hi. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, are, are you the chief nuclear engineer at the, at the Three Mile Island facility? Uh, yes, I am. How did you get in here? Uh, don't worry about that right now. All we wanted to do was just ask you a few questions about the disaster at this facility, and then we'll be getting out of your hair. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what exactly happened on March 28, 1979 at 4 a.m.? Well, we had a blockage in the demineralizer line and it caused the compensate pump to trip. And this led to the feed water pump to trip. Heat pressure built up and no cooling and the emergency relief valve opened and the reactor took. Okay, so then the reactor had an automated safety feature then? Uh, yes it did, but unfortunately it wasn't automated enough. The, the console gave false readings to the operator and the safety valve. That the safety valve was closed, but it actually was still open. This led to cooling escaping and nuclear boiling on the fuel cells. And this caused, it led to a severe temperature spike resulting in a meltdown. Oh, that's terrible, man. Um, how many people were actually killed in this incident? None, thankfully. And all it's estimated to cost about a billion dollars to clean up. However, the lesson about more automation and less flawed human control was invaluable. Wow, uh, every t everyone thought that this was just such a devastating tragedy. But uh, thank you very much for your, for your time, sir. We'll be leaving now. Oh, yeah, let's go. Hey, Samir, that looks like an engineer. Do you think we should ask him some questions? Yeah. Hey, sir. Sir, uh, are you an engineer here at the Oma Nuclear Power Plant? Uh, yes, I am, but who are you and how did you get past security? Well, actually, uh, we're time travelers from the year 2011, uh, and uh, don't worry about security. Um, okay, I guess. Anyway, can I help you with something? Yes, yeah, so, well, we, we actually had questions. Uh, we were wondering how has the Gen 3 nuclear power plants, as such as this, have improved their safety measures from the Gen 2? Well, compared to the Gen 2, these Gen 3 power plants use a higher burn-up in order to reduce the amount of fuel we need and to reduce the amount of waste that we produce. Also, this power plant right here has been incorporated with a simpler and more rugged design in order to make it easier to operate and to avoid operational upsets that can occur. So, accidents like Chernobyl, uh, I think, of the past? That is correct. Uh, we've also incorporated this power plant with a patch of safety features. And uh, what are the features? 
Well, passive safety features require no active control and no operational intervention in case of any kind of malfunction. Uh, all they rely on is gravity, natural convection, and uh, resistance to high temperatures. Okay, so that uh, Three Mile Island incident, that won't be repeated? Well, that's the plan anyway. All right. Well, what, what about the natural disasters, such as uh, what happened in 2011 with the Jap Japanese meltdown? Well, natural disasters are always tricky to plan for, but we did the best that we could in order to make this plant more structurally sound in order to avoid damage that could be caused by such natural disasters. Well, thanks again for answering our questions. No problem. Okay, 30 seconds.